Hello, this is Lin presenting the algorithm to find the closest pair of points. Given a set of points P inside a plane, we're trying to find the closest pair of points. And by closest, we mean the Euclidean distance between two points defined by this formula. This algorithm has a lot of real-life applications, one of which is collision detection in air traffic control. Now back to the problem. It is easy to come up with a brute force solution. Just look at every single pair of points and find the closest one. This gives us a running time of O n squared, which is not that efficient. So we introduce another algorithm using the divide and conquer technique. Let us start by looking at the base cases. Could we have just one point in our set? Since we're looking for a pair, let's say we should at least have a pair. If we have two points in the set, we can just say this is the closest pair because this is the only pair. We're also going to include n equals 3 as another base case because if we're dividing three points in half, one half must be left with just one point, which is not a valid base case that we are considering. In this case, we can just look at the three possible pairs and choose the closest one. Now let's think about how to divide the problems. Intuitively, we might think of this just as cutting a cake. But how should we let the program know which points belong to which half? We let this set of points P be an array. Each element in this array is an object, representing a point, with its x and y coordinate values. We then sort this array so that the points are ordered by their x values. The points in the graph are also numbered with their indices to visualize this order. Every time, we divide the array up from the middle, just as how we divide the points up in the graph using a vertical line. For each recursion, we are reducing the size of the problem by half. Once we reach the base cases, we find the closest pair easily. We let the shortest distance found on each side be delta L and delta R respectively. To combine the results from the two halves, we choose a smaller value between delta L and delta R and call it delta, the shortest distance so far. But could we conclude that this is the shortest distance from point one to point four? The answer is no, because we have not yet considered the pairs with one point from the left half and one point from the right half. Maybe it seems fine to include these pairs by comparing each of them and updating delta if necessary. But remember, this is just base case scenario. Let us skip over to the time when we need to combine the whole original set of points. We find our delta by comparing delta L and delta R. But now to consider the pairs with one point from the left and one point from the right, it's not that different from doing our brute force solution which will give us close to O n squared running time. So here comes the trick. If we look at point 1 and point 16, we know that they cannot have a distance shorter than delta. Likewise, it is safe for us to say that if there exists a pair whose distance is shorter than delta, then both points from the pair must be within delta distance from the middle line. Therefore, we can just simply disregard all those points outside of this strip of two delta width. And for those points within this strip, we reorder them based on their y values. This is not the end of the trick though, because we could still have a large number of points within the strip. We then make a similar observation along the y axis. For point 1 and 4, it is obvious that they cannot have a shorter distance than delta. From here, we can further narrow it down to a 2 delta by delta rectangle to look for a possible closer pair for each point within this strip. It takes only constant time for each point to look through all its possible pairs within this rectangle. This is because there is a hard limit on maximum number of points that could be in this region. Let's take a closer look at the left half of the rectangle. Remember that we have already divided and conquered the points on the left of the middle line. So we know that any pair of points on the left must be at least delta distance apart. So, there are at most four points on the left with a distance of delta apart from each other. Similarly, there are at most four points on the right. Note that there are two pairs of coincident points in the middle. This is possible because for each coincident pair, one point is from the left and the other is from the right. They have not yet been considered as a pair before in the subproblems. Thus, for any point in the strip, we only need to pair it up with the next seven points after it. 
because we know that there are at most seven points we haven't considered that could be in a distance shorter than delta from the point. Whenever we find a closer pair inside the strip, we just update delta. Before we move on to the pseudocode, there is another trick that helps to save efficiency. Instead of using extra time to sort the points by their x or y values on each recursion, we can simply pass in these pre-sorted arrays as arguments. So here's our pseudocode for the function. We have the base cases, we have the divide where we do the recursive calls, and we combine. Let us walk through the previous example with the code. With our 16 points, we divide them in half, and then recursively divide in half, until we reach the base case. We find delta L and delta R, and the minimum between those two. Next, we combine by looking at the strip. We always look at the next seven points for each point in the strip, or we stop if we have already exhausted all the other points in the strip before that. In this case, we don't find any closer pair in the strip, so we just return delta. We move on to the next recursion and repeat the process. In this case, we find a closer pair in the strip and update delta. Now we could combine the result of the two subproblems. In this case, we will find delta stays the same. We do the same for the right half of the original set and now perform the last combine. Delta got updated to reflect the closest pair of points in our set, and the algorithm ends here. Finally, let us look at the complexity analysis of this algorithm. For the pre-sorted arrays, we could use any sorting algorithm that takes n log n time. We then look at the running time for each recursion. It takes constant time to compute n and the base cases. It takes constant time to compute the midpoint and it takes constant time to find the minimum between dl and dr. Every time when we look at a strip, we're going to create a new array consisting of points just from that strip. Since we are looking at the points in the strip by increasing y values, we can just create this array by selecting all those points within the range from the pre-sorted y array. This operation takes us a total of n time. We may have as many points fall into the strip so it takes close to n time to loop through the strip array. Every point in a strip looks at a constant number of pairs, so the inner loop takes constant time. To add all of these, each recursion takes n time. The divide and conquer method divides every problem into two subproblems. So the total running time of the recursive function is n log n. Adding this with the time for pre-sorting arrays, which is also n log n, we get a total running time of n log n. For space complexity, the pre-sorted arrays takes up n extra resource. For each recursion, the simple operations just need constant extra space. Since we're creating a new array for the strip on each recursive call, and a strip can contain close to n points, this increases the space needed for each recursion to n. And since the depth of our recursion is log n, we have a total space complexity of n log n. In summary, we have a pretty efficient algorithm with both time and space complexity being n log n.